Please meet you on just my day. Woo woo. Woo woo. That's the only Rolling Stones song that I know off the top of my head. But today we begin our we officially begin our journey into the Rolling Stones now. Unlike a lot of other channels, we do not lie to each other. We do not do the dramatics, even though some people still accuse me of it. I, I don't know how or why, but it's all good. Um, everything we do here is genuine. Um, I will tell you if I've heard of something. I will tell you if I've not heard of something. Um, and I feel like I've done that a lot. Like almost every video I've said hey i knew i know this from so like I, I i feel like i've done it a lot lately but anyway 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 yes i have heard of the rolling stones i have i know that Mick Jagger is involved with the rolling stones um now i don't know the details um i don't know i don't know 90 per, 95 percent of the stuff I probably should know about the Rolling Stones. Um, kind of the same boat that I was in with the Beatles, except with the Beatles, I say it was more like 90. I didn't know, not, I, I, I feel like I knew a good 10% of what I should have known about the Beatles. But outside of that, I knew nothing else. Same here with the Rolling Stones. It's a lot I don't know. Um, I don't know everybody's name. Like I said, I only know Mick Jagger. Um, I know that one song, um, and yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Um, so again, I, I'm so excited to begin this journey. I, I was like, man, we reacted to the Beatles and everybody. I was like, let's go ahead and do the Rolling Stones. Like, why not? Let's, let's go ahead and start that journey. So because this is our first reaction, I know we got to do some research. So here we go. The Rolling Stones are an English rock band formed in London in 1962. Active for over six decades, they are one of the most popular and enduring bands of the rock era. In the early 1960s, the bands pioneered the gritty, rhythmically driven sound that came to define hard rock. Their first stable lineup consisted of vocalist Mick Jagger, multi-instrumentalist Brian Jones guitarist Keith Richards I know Keith Richards I feel like I've heard heard of Brian Jones let me see a picture oh he died in 1960 oh wow so he didn't even oh maybe I watched a documentary on him or something Hmm. Uh, guitarist Keith Richards, I, I've heard of Keith, uh, Keith Richards, and bassist Bill Wyman, and drummer Charlie Watts. That also sounds familiar. Charlie Watts. Oh, wow. He just passed away in 2021. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard of the name Charlie Watts. During their early years, Jones was the primary leader of the band. Wow. After Andrew Luke Autumn became the group's manager in 1963, he encouraged them to write their own songs. Jagger and Richards became the band's songwriters and primary creative forces alienating Jones, who developed a drug addiction that, by 1968, interfered with, with his ability to contribute meaningfully. That sucks. Um, rock, pop, blues, those are the genres that they are noted to, um, to, to be a part of. Decca, London, Rolling Stones, Virgin, Interscope, Polyadore, Columbia, Atlantic, A and M, uh, Geffen, A B, Apco. All of those are record labels. I, I've heard of a few of them. Um. Okay, 
Rooted in blues and early rock and roll, the Rolling Stones started out playing covers and were at the forefront of the British invasion in 1964, becoming identified with the youthful and rebellious counterculture of the 1960s. Gotcha. Jones left the band shortly before his death in 1969, having been replaced by guitarist Mick Taylor. The Rolling Stones estimated record sales of 200 million, making them one of the best selling music artists of all time. The band has won three Grammys and a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. They were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1989 and the UK Music Hall of Fame in 2004. Billboard and Rolling Stone have ranked the band as one of the greatest of all time. See, all of that I knew. I knew that, that they were one of the greatest. I knew the British invasion part. Um, uh, I knew they were considered one of the... I just said that. Anyway, that's the little bit that I knew. Um, but outside of that, I, I knew nothing else. So, um, you know, as, as, as we continue on our journey, we'll, we'll do more research and we'll figure out um, more about the, the stories behind the scenes and the details of, of the Rolling Stones, but I don't want to bore y'all with me doing all this research, so we're we going to keep it pushing. This is Gimme Shelter, um, and it's the lyric video. Um, there didn't appear to be any visuals associated with the, with the song, um, and we'll do song research afterwards, and let me pull it up just so I credit the right people, because... If Brian passed away that fast, um, I got to make sure. Yeah, so this song says it came out. This this song came out in 1969. And so we, we'll find out if um, if Brian was still in the, in the group at that point or if he was replaced by Mick. So we'll find that out later. I, I won't spoil it for myself. But anyway, let's get into it. The Rolling Stones, first reaction, give me shelter. Let's go. Whose voice is that? And you know, they both sound incredible. I'm going to assume that's Mick with the high pitch voice. Oh my gosh. Let me hear that part again. For one, what is that? What's that thing that sound like? Um, um, it sounds like you winding up. I don't know how many of y'all had those type of cameras, but the cameras that you had to like, turn the thing on the side to, to take the picture um, on a Kodak. It was the thing on the front. I don't even know what it's called, but the thing you had to slide, it, it make, it's making that Is that the thing that you scrape? It's a... Uh, I've seen it before. I don't know what it's called, and I sound like such an idiot like I always do. What's the name of that thing, man? That's producing that sound. Um... Just everything from an audio standpoint. I don't know 
if this was mixed and engineered this way in the 1960s. But if it was, this sounds from a, just a production standpoint, not even talking about the instrumentation from a production standpoint, this sounds incredible, but what is that instrument? And yeah, whoever got this high pitched voice right here. Oh my gosh. I I gotta find out who it is. I'm sorry. I gotta spoil it for myself. I gotta find out who that is. Oh, Mary Clayton. That's who that is. I thought it was. Oh. Keith Richards has backing vocals. And Mary Clayton leading backing vocals. Who is this goddess? Soul and gospel singer. Man, I swear. Some of the things that I've loved about doing these reaction videos is... I mean... From Elvis, from finding out that Whitney Houston was a backup singer for her, uh, for him, excuse me. Um, great gig in the sky. I forgot. I forgot her name. Don't kill me. For Pink Floyd. Um, I mean, when you when you just hear what these backup singers in these session instrumentalist like Jimmy Page was before he broke out with Led Zeppelin when you hear how talented they are it's like wow I, I'm sure they they don't even like really get the credit they deserve for their contribution for their contribution to this music but she sounds incredible <laughs>
This is one of my favorite songs that I've heard in the past month. Yep, I said it. If you think I'm talking about other songs that I reacted to, yes, that includes a lot of songs that I reacted to lately. And look, I have enjoyed almost every song that I've heard in the past month. This right here set the bar. I love download. Download, 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 download. It's being downloaded. Give me one second. Give me one second. Of course, I ain't gonna see it. Yeah, I ain't gonna see it. But it's being downloaded. It's being downloaded. I love this song. That's literally all I want to say. I love this song. Love this song. Gimme Shelter is a song by the Rolling Stones, yes. It is the opening track. That's how you start the album. Holy shit. It's the opening track on their 1969 album, Let It Bleed. The song covers the brutal realities of war, including murder, rape, and fear. It features prominent guest vocals by American singer Mary Clayton. Hard rock, blues rock. Completely agree. Both Jagger and Keith Richards have writing credit give me shelter as placed in various positions on many best of greatest list including that of rolling stone magazine where it was ranked number 13 on the 500 greatest songs of all time i can't disagree can't disagree Richards began working on the song's signature opening riff in London while Jagger was away filming performance with Richards' then-girlfriend, Anita Pallenberg. I heard there was a lot of, like, sleeping with each other's girls. So maybe, but maybe I, I read that all wrong. Maybe they're saying they did that movie together and it was just coincident. I... Maybe I read that all wrong. And it's, not, it's, it's really not important. But I do find that interesting. I do find that interesting. But okay. We'll let that go. In his autobiography, Life, Riches revealed that the tension of the song was inspired by his jealousy at seeing the relationship between Pallenberg and Jagger and his suspicions of an affair between them. Oh. Wow. Uh, who's saying this? Jagger? The song begins with Richards performing the guitar intro, soon joined by Jagger's lead vocal. Oh, Jagger. Jagger said this in a 1995 interview with Rolling Stone. Well, it's a very rough, very violent era. The Vietnam War, violence on the screens, pillage and burning. And Vietnam was not was not war as we knew it in the conventional sense. The thing about Vietnam was that it wasn't like World War II and it wasn't like Korea and it wasn't like the Gulf War. It was a real nasty war and people didn't like it. People objected and people didn't want to fight it. That's a kind of end of the world song, really. It's apocalypse. The whole record's like that. Yeah. I mean, and it's, it's, it's not. They didn't have to go into detail with anything. You just see, you just hear rape murder, violence, and like, 
just the way it was sung by Mary and Mick. That's all that needed to be sung. Like, it is so much passion and just grit about it. And then you add that soul from Mary. It also had an element of soul in it. Like, I ain't gonna lie. I'm about to. I'm. I'm. When I finish this reaction, I'm gonna listen to it again. Um. Did it? Uh, it's not telling me. Uh, been featured in a variety of films, television shows, commercials. Of course, I'm sure it has. Goodfellas Casino. Call of Duty Black Ops. You know, I introduce myself. I'm a man uh, today. That's the Rolling Stones, right? But that's the song that was in Black Ops. I don't remember hearing this in Black Ops. If you play Call of Duty Black Ops, you let me know when this song was played. But we all know when the Please to meet you. That song was played in the river mission. When when you controlling the um the boat and they blowing everything. Anyway. Um Yeah. It was it was pretty much used in everything. Platinum in the UK, gold in Italy. Doesn't give any US uh, stats. The use of a female's voice was the producer's idea. Who, which was, what's the name of the producer? Jimmy Miller. Gotcha. Shout out to Jimmy. Perfect idea. It would be it, the use of a female was the producers. It would be one of those moments along the lines of I hear a girl on this track. Get one on the phone. Summoned from bed around midnight uh, by. I don't even know how to pronounce it. By somebody Clayton about four months pregnant. Made her recording with just a few takes and then returned home to bed. See, wasn't the, hold on. I forgot her name from Pink Floyd. Wasn't she pregnant too? Pink Floyd, great gig in the sky. What was that lady's name? I think I remember reading that she was pregnant. Claire Tory wasn't her. Uh, oh, it don't say she was pregnant. I don't know why I thought she was pregnant, but that's crazy. Four months pregnant. And she did that. At about the two and 59 minute mark into the song. Clayton's voice cracks under the strain. Once during the second refrain on the word shot. Then on the word murder. During the third refrain. After which Jagger is faintly heard. Exclaiming. Woo. In response to Clayton's powerful delivery. I didn't even notice that, but that's incredible. I love this story. Upon returning home, Clayton suffered a miscarriage. Oh my God. Attributed by some sources to her exertions during the recording. Oh 
My God. This song literally claimed a life. That is crazy. I don't even want to read nothing else. This woman possibly lost her baby because of how powerful she was singing. Yep. Hey, any music that's made like that, I'm a fan. Like, I'm not a fan of what happened. I'm a fan of what is put in to making great art. A lot of times we as consumers don't really think about what goes into making this music. Like so often, I actually wanted to do a study and I, of course it's a question that's been asked. I'm sure somebody probably did do the study. But why a lot of artists succumb to drugs. And like when you hear a lot of artists talk about their creative process, um, especially once they get on drugs, you really you you really get a a sense of what these artists go through to create at the level that they do. The fact that this woman was woken up at midnight to record this song, and she she suffered a miscarriage after she when she got back home she had a. That's just, that's for one, that's just another, another level of dedication. Um, I don't see anything unlike Tori from Pink Floyd. I don't see nothing about no lawsuit. So I'm going to assume she got her credit and was taken care of financially. Yep, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Just one reaction and I'm a fan. Hey, that's one of the craziest stories I've ever heard in my life. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. That's it. That's how I want to end this. Shout out to Miss Clayton. I mean, of course, it, it sucks that if... The claims are true. She lost her child to this. I mean, that alone, I think the song should be in the top 10 of 500 greatest songs. This song took a life, literally. That's 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 insane. I'm a fan. Y'all let me know what else from Rolling Stones I need to check out. I am blown away by everything that I've read and heard today and I can't wait to hear and learn more so y'all leave the recommendations in the comment section and I'm definitely going to check it out whatever it is I'm going to check it out ASAP but as always like comment and subscribe I appreciate y'all for watching until next time with the Rolling Stones peace <laughs>